Hello, right, um, my name's Tom Bolter. I am um, an AHT learning and teaching in Oxford. Uh, I've been teaching a few years. I've noticed a sort of disturbing trend, really, which is that with some of these kids, even though I've taught it them, they don't necessarily know how to do it. I don't know if you've noticed a similar thing. Uh, why is that? Maybe sometimes it was my teaching. Often it's because they forgot. Often it's because maybe they weren't there. Often it's because maybe they weren't listening. And one of the ways we've tried to, tried to get over these problems is by uh, using a flipped learning approach, which I'll just show you now. So, Ross, if you go to the next... Oh, actually, uh, if you go on the website there... Thanks, mate. Can you do that? Oh, is it not going to work? Well, yeah, that's it. Right, so this is our um, flipped learning channel. And all we do here is we store bits of direct instruction. So if you just pause, that, there's our um, head of year seven, she's talking last year, actually to our year 11, about revi revising and giving them a technique about revision cards. If you scroll down, please, um, Ross, we've got loads of subjects involved, uh, just giving the direct instruction. It's, there's nothing especially creative about this. It's not, it's not exciting stuff. It's how to do question three of the English exam, how to do question four of the English exam. But if they, don't, if they haven't got that in, in class, then it's available for, the, well, for them when they need it. Um, we think there's massive impact from that. Results have gone up significantly. A lovely green raise online. We had 8,000 hits on our videos in the 24 hours prior to the English exam last year which is massive engagement, you know, and it's, it's pretty consistently good. So we, li we like this stuff. Um, one of the things we also thought about doing then is for using it for staff inset. Uh, so if you scroll down a bit there, Ross, you'll see that um, all amongst the kids' stuff, there's a professional learning, it's the second playlist down, a professional learning um, playlist where we're storing our CPD. So, for example, we did want to do some CPD at the beginning of this year, uh, inset on success criteria. Um, which we knew some people weren't going to be there. We knew lots of people would have to go to this session and would rather be doing their rooms, rather be doing their mark books. They always say they want more flexibility of time at the beginning of the year, so we thought, fair enough, we'll record it, do it, chunk it up in bits, and you've got three weeks to do it. You can do whatever you want. So basically, we did a live session um, of, of direct insert, and we got about sort of 50 people turning up to that, but then we also had the flexibility to say, do it whenever you want. Now, the useful thing is after... It's stored, there's a permanency to it. So when I'm going to watch a lesson now, when anyone's watching a lesson, if there's a problem with success criteria, if there's a problem with or, you know, a development point, if they want to improve their group work, we've got the resources there and we're building up a bank over time. So that sort of post-feedback action, our training is permanently stored and available um, in, a, in a really highly kind of personalised way. It's training which is then available at point of need, not point of delivery. I want you to chuck it at me, really. <laughs> There we go. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's exactly what we're talking about. Something you can look at those videos tomorrow and discover what you're going to teach in second period. Um, so